I feel like I feel like it is a language because what a lot of my work pertains to is my life with my family. I mean, it, it's hard to see. I think in a piece that's just an abstract work of art, people might not get that. But for me, the, the sort of matrix that you were mentioning, it's a very meditative state that I can get into. And, you know, I'll, I'll be thinking about things, but that allows me to just sort of relax and, you know, still be able to focus on what's going on in my life, but relate it, you know, to the issues that are taking my taking up my time, um, and the titles then come come out of what I was focusing on in that moment, or what was um, a struggle in my life at the time, or what was easy in my life at the time. But that you know, and I, I think that's another thing, and maybe how I come across my personality might not sort of it's not dark I'm not a dark person but I feel like when I get into my painting zone that's when my sort of like I think about my frustrations or things that I feel like I'm missing or things that I could do differently and you know I feel like I've hit this place where it's doing what I wanted it to do after I left school you know and I had hit this point where I, I remember specific drawing that I had done in mixed media drawing and I was so excited because I felt like it perfectly it was this perfect marriage of the organic with the more angular and you know graphic style line that I was looking for you get you, you get out of school and then it's this thing of wow now I can do whatever I want to do because in school you've got the assignments and you kind of have to please and you know so that's kind of nerve-wracking to leave school but exciting you know, so I kept pushing that and trying that, but you know, I I have these times where I feel um, pleased with what I'm doing and satisfied and feeling like the work is successful, but I still have those times where I think, but I'm just an abstract painter. You know, I'm not, am I doing something important? But I think we all have those doubts. And then, then, then there's the days where you sell a painting and it's okay well every somebody likes my work this is great you know when I look back at old work from when I started I I kind of cringe it's sort of hard to see it but I feel like I got to this place where you know I'm creating what I want to create and it's it's my work back when I was in school um, I I really enjoyed Richard Diebenkorn because I liked what he was doing with paint um, and color. You know, so I feel like when you're in school, you know, you're you're not mimicking, you're not, I mean, but you do try. You're trying these things and you do that. And I felt like I could have looked at him forever. You know, then you just start to learn about other artists. And I was, I, I would say, drawn to the, 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 mar the modern artist and the contemporary and abstract artist. And for me, I think it's more of this puzzle that I start to put together. It's, it's, it doesn't have to be about the exact thing that's sitting in front of me. I like to be able to, you know, explore and, you know, if I, I make a line or I make a shape and then just go from there. See, I just feel like it's it's constantly changing for me, and, and I like the way that that feels inside so much better. I, I say things to myself like, but everything doesn't, it doesn't have to be trapped in the canvas. You know, there's other things that I could do. But I, so I think that's important as an artist to keep your inspiration and keep track of your inspiration and, you know, experiment. Not all experiments work for sure, you know, but you're not going to learn anything if you don't try something different. <laughs>